The upgrade is completed on the Fox Alien XC Pro 8040. But there's one step left before you begin working with the projects. You need to calibrate the x-axis. In fact, quite frankly, Fox Alien does an outstanding job of that. However, when you do the upgrade, you need to key in different numbers to calibrate the x-axis. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to calibrate the x-axis and enter those numbers into your Gerbil settings. If you look at the lead screw on the old Fox Alien XC Pro, you can see that the diameter of this lead screw and the threads per millimeter and the pitch are going to be different than what's on the new 8040. And looking over at the 8040, this lead screw is significantly larger in diameter. The threads per millimeter is going to be much greater and the pitch, I think, is different also. Now, am I going to be mathematically correct to tell you exactly what the pitch and diameter is? No, that's not important. The, what's important is that it's different. It's obvious when you look at the new 8040, the lead screw is significantly larger in diameter. I would venture to say that the millimeters per inch and the pitch of the thread is going to be different as well. Do I really care what that is? No, I don't. Do I need to know the difference between the old machine and the new machine? I don't need to know that either. What I need to know is when I tell it to move 200 millimeters, does it move 200 millimeters or does it go someplace else? That's what we're going to do today. Find out what is actually moving versus what we really want it to move and then how to calibrate it. I choose to use the open build controller to be able to control the machine. However, any controller that you use is going to have something similar. In this particular one, they have a tab right up here at the top where I can go in and look at the actual G-code settings. And then I can scroll down and look at each one. On the left hand side is the actual G-code. In the middle, it tells you what it does. And then it has the value and a definition. So it's very, very easy to be able to understand. What I need to do is scroll down to this section right here. The x-axis is what we're going to be changing. It is the dollar sign 100. And it shows right here the definition of that is the x-axis steps per millimeter. And currently it is set at 400. Now on the old Fox Alien XC Pro, the lead screws were the same on all three axes. The X, the Y, and the Z axis. And you can see right here that this is the dollar sign 100 for the X. And if you need to calibrate the Y axis, it's a dollar sign 101. And on the Z axis, it's a dollar sign 102. And that takes care of the Z axis. And you look over here from the manufacturer, all three settings were set at the 400 millimeters. And that worked perfectly. And I can give you a demonstration over at the machine. What we need to change today, because we upgraded to the 8040, is the x-axis. It is no longer 400 steps per millimeter. We're going to go back over to the machine control now. I'm going to actually show you if I want to move 100 millimeters on the y-axis that it does in fact move 100 millimeters. The first thing that you're going to need is a good quality ruler. And I'm using this one. This is marked, this is marked off in the millimeters and it's a fairly close tolerance. And this will work well for my purposes. So what I'm going to do is set it down over here. I want to set this scale down on the y-axis exactly where it needs to be and parallel to the y-axis. Then I'm going to move this bit over to right here. I'm going to use the 300 millimeter point. Now I'm going to adjust the ruler until it's exactly on that point.
I'm going to zoom in real close so that you can see exactly where it is. So that is the starting point, and I'm going to go 100, in fact, I'll go 200 millimeters. So that will bring it all the way up to the 500 millimeter point to be able to run this test. Back at the computer, I'm going to set this at 100 millimeters, and I'm going to move this 100 and then 200. Let's take a look and see where it actually stopped. And back at the machine, you can see that it moved exactly 200 millimeters. It stopped right at the 500 millimeter point. So that shows that the y-axis is calibrated correctly. Now I can do the same thing to the z-axis but I know that it is correct. So now we're gonna rotate our ruler and we're gonna turn it around in this direction. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring this over to the 200 millimeter point and then we're gonna move along the X axis and see just how far off that it is. I'm going to slide that right up there and then I'm going to move it to the left until it's right on the 200 millimeter point. Now I can slide the ruler left and right to get it exactly on that point. And that looks real good. Now I want to move it 200 millimeters to the right. It should stop at the 500 millimeters. Now for the first test, I'm going to take and just run 100 millimeters. So it should go from the 200 to the 300, which is 100 millimeters. Let's see where it really stops. So I'm back at the computer. Now that's actually 100. So we went from the 200 and it's all the way up to 450. If I ran that again, it would be way over to the far side. I'm going to stop with just the 100 millimeters. Now from here back, I can go back and it stops exactly at my 200 millimeters, but you can see it's going to 450. <laughs> 450 millimeters exactly. So how do we correct this? So here's the formula that we need to work with. We want to have an ideal travel. This is the amount that we want it to go divided by the actual travel. And then we're going to multiply that by what was in the computer at the by the 100 setting for the x-axis. So the ideal travel was 100 millimeters. We actually went 250 millimeters and we need to multiply that by the 400 millimeters and that will give us our new answer. So when we calculate this out, we take the 100, divide it by the 250, and then we multiply that by the 400, and that's going to equal 160. Let's go back into the Gerbil settings, and we'll make the change and put this in at 160. So we're back at the control panel again. Let's go up to the Gerbil settings. So let's scroll down. 
Okay, we're changing this on the x-axis and we want to change this to 160. We're going to double click on that and I'm going to enter in 160.000 and that will take care of it. We'll hit enter and now let's run this test again. So we've saved we clicked on save to the firmware and they asked us, so we want this to take effect. We want this to change. So now it's going to restart everything. And then we can scroll down and we can take a look and see that it's actually in there. So let's go back to the machine control. And let's make our move. We're at the 100 millimeters and let's see if it actually moves 100 millimeters. And where does it stop? Exactly at the 100 millimeter point. So let's go back to our original 200. exactly where it needs to be. Now this time let's move 200 millimeters. And we'll zoom in real close again so that you can see that. So moving at 200 millimeters is stopped exactly at the 400 millimeter line. So we verify that now the machine is calibrated to the new setting now this shows you exactly how easy it is to be able to calculate and calibrate your machine. It's very simple to do and it depends on the controller. Each controller is going to be a little bit different as to where you go in their settings to make that change. But the actual formula is going to be exactly the same. All you need to do is take what you want it to move to versus what it's actually moving and then times the steps per minute based on what's currently in your Gerbil settings. Once you know that information, just calculate it, put in the new number, save it, and then test again. Very simple process, and I hope this will help you. I know this is a question that I get a lot on the different machines, and I have shown this on the Easel software, on the um, Open Build software, and even the G-Code Sender. So that gives you a pretty good variety of the different controllers that I've used to be able to calibrate the different machines based on the software that I'm using. So again, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, by all means, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye.